Welcome back to This Is A Commander Channel, where this is a Commander Channel, and today I'm going to talk about Commander, Tough Rules, and Cool Interactions, episode 46. Today's episode is in response to one of the new enchantments from the Dominary United set, as it's similar to one of the most powerful mono blue commanders in all of Commander. In fact, the most popular mono blue commander, even more so than Urza. Uh, yet it's just slightly different in how it interacts with redirect effects. The new enchantment is Vesuvan Diplomacy. Di Diplomancy, whatever how it's pronounced. You want to say diplomacy. Uh, diplomacy. We'll go with that. So let's take a look at what exactly it does. It's an enchantment for three and a blue that says whenever you cast a spell that targets only a single artifact or creature you control, create a token that's a copy of that artifact or creature, except it's not legendary. The effect is crazy powerful, especially since it removes the legendary supertype. Also, I love that Wiley Beckert art on the card. Uh, we've seen an effect like this on Orvar, the All Form, which has the ability, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, if it targets one or more other permanents you control, create a token that's a copy of one of those permanents. So it's not as open-ended as Orvar, as he includes any permanence that you target. But again, that aspect that it removes the legendary supertype can lead to some Miriam levels of shenanigans. That's a lot of ETBs and such. But these videos don't serve to talk about the power of cards, but to help understand the rules of the game and reduce confusion on cards. So what's the confusing thing here? So now the wrench that we introduce into this uh, is something like uh, Spellskite, which is a creature that has the activated ability to pay a Phyrexian Blue to change a target of target spell or ability to Spellskite. So here's the situation. You control your commander, Orvar, and you cast a Twiddle, targeting your Moldrifter. Their effect's not too important. The main thing is you're going to be making a copy of the Moldrifter, potentially. Then, with that on the stack, with the Twiddle on the stack, your opponent, who controls a Spellskite, activates it to redirect the Twiddle to their own Spellskite. If this were to happen, would you end up with a token copy of your Moldrifter? Pause the video if you want to take the time to reread Orvar over and over and his ability. The answer to this specific situation is that no, you would not get a copy. So why is that? The reasoning that you do not is because of something found in Comprehensive Rules 603.4 called the Intervening If Clause. So let's take a look at what 603.4 says. A triggered ability may read when, whenever, at, triggered event, if condition is met, then effect. When the trigger event occurs, the ability checks whether the stated condition is true. The ability triggers only if it is. Otherwise, it does nothing. If the ability triggers, it checks the stated condition again as it resolves. If the condition isn't true at that time, the ability is removed from the stack and does nothing. There's a little bit more in there afterwards, but not too crucial to what we're talking about. So basically, this means that whatever causes this triggered ability to trigger, it needs to be true when it was initially triggered, as well as when the triggered ability actually is resolving from the stack. So in reading Orvar again, we can see that he does say if it targets one or more other permanents you control. And if the opponents redirect the Twiddle to target their own Spellskite, then when Orvar's ability resolves, the spell on the stack is no longer targeting one or more permanents that you control. So the ability fades into oblivion. So what does this mean for Vesuvan Diplu Di Duplimacy? Duplamancy, man, that's a tough word to pronounce. They're basically the same thing, right? Again, if I'm making a video on this, then clearly the answer is not the same. 
And the reasoning for this is that Vesuvian du duplomancy, duplomancy does not have that intervening if in the card text. Vesuvian diplomacy only cares that the creature or artifact was targeted by the spell at some point, but doesn't care if that changes upon resolution. So, this is one more reason why Vesuvian blah, 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 might actually just be more powerful than Orvar. Sure, it won't include lands, which Orvar can make extras of, but it will successfully resolve more often in rare situations. It will let you keep more legendary creatures and artifacts around. And also, being a non-creature enchantment, it will survive through more board wipes, and it'll you know get hit less often by targeted removal. Of course, things get really dirty and math gets really crazy when you start to make token copies of Vesuvian with Orvar, and then you start to make a ton of token copies of your Orvar that are not legendary. And now my brain just hurts thinking of all the tokens that are on the battlefield now. Yeah, it gets a little chaotic. Well, whatever. Anyhow, that's all I've got for today's episode. As always, I hope that all of you found this video to be entertaining, at least, and I hope that even a few of you may have even learned something about the crazy rules in this great game of magic. Have a good one. Ta-ta. Vesuvian duplomancy. Duplomancy. It's like duplicate and diplomacy, but it's the, it's the in. It's the it's the antsy. If it was duplom duplomacy duplomacy. If it's duplomacy, I feel like that'd be easy. duplomancy. What a weird freaking name! But ah, I do love that Wiley Beckard art. All right, whatever. This video is getting long enough. That I was okay. All right.